Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, uh, just wanted to jump on and talk about uh, the Tarsier Eclipse um, and some frequent asked questions that we, we usually field uh, on a daily, sometimes weekly basis. Um, so uh, here they are right here, the Tarsier Eclipse. Um, I'll, I'll pull off one so you can just see it. So this right here is the Tarsier. Um, and it fits on the end of a pair of night vision goggles. So here's a pair here. You just slip this on. It's pressure fit. Um, these actually were, um, they have a, a lanyard here that connects and goes on to, uh, you can hard point them onto your helmet or back to your, um, but these actually are, can be hard pointed back onto your uh MVG mount or your helmet. Uh, that way, if you do by inadvertently knock them off or something like that, you're not going to completely lose them. So, um, if you have never worn night vision goggles or you're not really sure what these do, uh, these change the depth of field uh, for your goggles. So, what happens in normal night vision operations? You turn on your MVGs and then you focus your night vision goggles out to some distance, normally out to, you know, quote unquote, infinity, but you want to focus them out far. Now, what happens is, is now you can't see anything up close. So when I look down to grab a door handle or uh, if I want to uh, unjam a weapon system or something like that, I cannot do that looking through my night vision goggles. So I have to lift either lift them up or look underneath my nods or something, but I can't look through my night vision um, up close unless I uh, adjust the focus of my night vision. So these right here attach onto the end of them, change that depth of field, and allow you to see near and far at the same time. Uh, it set uh, the best way that we have seen to do it, and, and, and honestly, the best way that I like to do it is I'll turn on my night vision goggles. I'll focus them out to distance, right? And then I will dial this aperture um, and close the aperture until I start to see where it gets a little bit dim in my night vision. And then I back off a little bit. And that's what I roll with for the rest of the night. I don't adjust them. I don't keep manipulating the iris or adjustment. I roll with that for the entire night. Now, there are some occasions where you significantly change your ambient conditions or something uh, forces you to have to change. And I might have to open it up a little bit more to let more light in, or I need to I need to really see something really close and then I'll like, I'll dial it down so I can see something. For example, if I need to read a map or something like that, something up to really close where I have to do that. But generally speaking, um, I'll set these for the, whatever that ambient condition is at night and I'll roll like that for the entire night. So I'm not constantly fiddling with them. I'm not constantly adjusting the MVGs. Um, I just roll with it like this. Now, when you do this, you might not be able to see everything at three inches in front of your face and out to infinity. I might only be able to see down to my feet, you know, and out to, out to infinity. So you lose some of that really up close if you don't have them all the way dialed down. But again, <clears throat> I'm still seeing 85 to 90% of the objects that I need to see that are in clear and in, in focus and clarity. So I uh, just wanted to kind of point that out because that's something that we do see from time to time as people ask about that. Um, so another question we get is, is, is the Tarzir the only refocused device on the market? And the answer is no. Um, the Tarzir and uh, the Tarzir has been around for a little over a decade now. They've been on the market for about 10, uh, almost 12 years now. Um, we license this technology um, from Focus Research Group. So they're a partner of ours and they have been. Um, it was interesting, kind of a funny story. Uh, we were filing our patent on the Tarzir Eclipse. And as we were getting ready to file our patent for the Tarzir Eclipse, uh, our patent attorney told us, hey, 
this group has already filed it and they beat you guys out. And so we reached out to them. Uh, Rob Hanna, uh, who's the owner of Focus Research Group, uh, we reached out to them and asked them if we could bring our product to market under their light under their patent. And they agreed. And uh, we've been partners and we've licensed this technology from them um, for you know over a decade. Um, between Focus and Mapbox, uh, we have owned the market for these refocusing um, devices. And you know there are um, DIY uh, options out there as well. And if you're not comfortable uh, getting into a pair of Tarzi or Eclipses, they're definitely a great option to get into. Uh, you can find a lot of different resources to make your own, do your own. Um, and, and go from there. And then when you are ready to um, protect your $10,000, $14,000 investment with something uh, that uh, is there to help you protect, but also give you uh, function and clarity, uh, you know, that's where the Tarzir really comes in and really separates ourselves from other devices that are out there on the market. Um, the Tarzir Eclipse is the only device on the market right now that is uh, certified for air crew member. Um, so about five years ago, we went through all the testing with the Navy, we're uh, nav air certified. So the air crew guys can fly these and, and uh, or fly with these on their uh, aviation goggles uh, in the back. So the air crew guys can, um, we've got other branches that are looking at that as well to, to get them uh, certified to fly. Um, and, and that's, so these ones, uh, don't have them anymore, but there is a little lanyard that comes with it that's shipped with it, um, that you can again, tie back to your goggles. Um, so, uh, another question that we get asked is, can I use, uh, these as day filters or can't I just poke holes in, in my, in my, uh, rubber caps? And the answer is yeah, sort of, um, you can, right? Um, you can, um, you can use these or you can poke holes in your scope caps or your, or your rubber caps that go on the end of these. The problem is, is what I mentioned before with the ambient light condition, right? So if you poke a hole at the end of your rubber cap, um, one, you've just ruined that cap from being any type of protection on this very expensive, very difficult optic uh, lens, um, and now you've just um, eliminated that rubber cap from fo uh, from protecting that, right? From dust and debris or anything like that, um, from from uh, protecting this lens from that. Um, the other thing is, is whenever you go out and operate with those on, uh, you're stuck to whatever is that perfect ambient condition. And I can tell you when those pinholes, even like a 5.56, five, or even if you use like a 308 or 7.62 round or something like that, a little bit bigger, um, that hole is not going to be ideal um, all the time, right? So you have to have that alum that's perfect for that opening. And that's what's so awesome about the Tarzir is you can adjust it depending on the ambient condition that night. So if you have a very low alum night, you might have to open this up uh, like that. If you have a full moon, you might be able to dial it down a little bit more. You know, and, and the Focus Research Group, uh, the hoplite that they have, they have something similar where you can, um, they have different size openings that you can put into there. Uh, so again, you can adjust it for uh, the different conditions. So, um, hey, I've been talking for a few minutes. I've seen a couple of people comment on and I've seen some people join in, join, join out and come, come and go. So, hey, uh, you know, wherever you're uh, coming in from, let me know what city or state or country you're in, and I'll say, hey. I think I saw a comment a little bit ago about uh, flying with these in the Marine Corps. 100% um, recommend the TARS here. Man, I appreciate that. That's definitely, you know, good. Uh, you know, again, they're, they're two great options, right? Um, uh, and two different options, too. So the Hoplite... And the Tarzir, uh, they're great options. They're, they're also two different options at the end of the day. Um, Rob and, and the guys over at Focus, they're, they're great guys. Uh, can't, can't speak um, enough of good things about those guys. They're good guys. Um, 
All right, so uh, do I need to open and close my iris to make the image uh, look uh, in focus, both near and far? And so the answer is no, right? So that's what I talked about earlier. Um, the whole point of these is so you don't have to keep focusing either your MVG focus, right, or the Tarzira clips. Um, and that's one of the, probably the biggest field of questions that we get asked outside of why they are why they are so expensive but I'll get to that in a little bit um, uh, so again when you set these up you want to set them up for the ambient condition that you're in and so for what we what we tell people and what I've found to be the best and what our team has found to be the best um, and really what guys feedback back to us is uh, you know we've got tens of thousands of these out on the market now um, you know, we get some feedback, not all the time uh, do we get feedback, but the times we do get feedback from guys, um, this is what, you know, they've told us to is, has worked the best for them. So you set your, you set your goggle first to focus. Uh, you put your Tarzira clips on, or if your Tarzira is already on, you just open it up, focus your MVG, because you can manipulate your MVG focus back here by just grabbing this. I can't do it with one hand. I'll grab it here. So I can grab this and I can rotate my MVG focus. Um, and then what I will do is I will dial this down. And then, like I said, once it gets a little dim, I, 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 you can see the dim happen in my MVG. And then I will slowly, I will just barely tap it back open. You could, you didn't even see that happen, but I barely open it back up. And then that that will turn back on that kind of that, that bright effect that I like in my MVGs. And then I'm ready to roll around for the rest of the night and being able to see, like I said, I can see logs when I'm stepping over them. If I'm on a foot patrol, I can, I can step over logs. I can, I can grab door handles. I can see buddies in, in rooms when I'm clearing with them. Again, if you do get into a situation where, um, you need uh, more light because these have reduced some of that light. One, you can, um, it, depending on your tactical situation, you could throw on an IR real quick to, to get that light. Um, you could pop them off if you, if you wanted to, or you can just open them up again to get that. Um, but really, you're not, they're not designed to sit here and all through the night just sit here and do this. That's not the purpose of them. It really defeats the purpose of why you even put an iris on your MVGs um, because you're, you're getting, you, it would be better to just sit there and focus this back and forth, right? So um, the whole point of these is to set it and forget it. <laughs> Sorry, I know that was corny. Dead joke, I guess. Um, uh, so let's see, what else do we get? Uh, I got a list of questions here. Um, so one, one thing that, uh, I, I want to point, uh, I touch on. So, uh, I had a really interesting story a few years back. Um, I had a, a new guy who was driving our side by side. It was a low loom night. So, um, obviously you're going to have to open up your Tars ears, um, pretty significantly to get, uh, that iris to work properly and the depth of field to work properly and everything. Um, but on this particular night, it was low, low. I mean, I think it was either no, I don't, I don't even think we had any loom whatsoever. I had a new guy driving the side by side and it was just dusty. We couldn't stay in our maneuvering, our, our maneuvering element in like formation. Um, and, um, man, it was just like, it was really hard for us to see the, the to, like I said, to see how we were staying in alignment to, to, to keep our spacing that we needed to, if we were doing, uh, to have to be able to engage a target. Um, we were having a difficult, he was having a difficult time staying where we needed to stay. And I kept on having to tell him like, speed up, slow down, go left, go right. You know, all these things back and forth. And he's like, dude, I cannot see anything. Like, how can you see right now? And so I pulled these off and I threw them on his goggles as he was driving. And it was literally like that dumb and dumber scene. He was like, you know, like you've had these extra set of gloves these whole times. He's like, dude, you've had these on the whole time. Like this is ridiculous. Now in the tube, it's hard to tell you like what I really saw, obviously, but I'll try to do my best. Um, it was darker 
of an image than I particularly like in my goggles. Um, but I was able to pick up all the shadows and I was able to see everything because everything was in focus and it was, it was clear. And so because everything was, uh, close up and far as we were driving, you know, things were coming pretty quickly because everything was in focus. I was able to pick up on these shadows better than he could when everything was just getting washed out for him. And, um, that, that's been the only time that I ever had a, uh, situation that like that, where, you know, I ran them for that whole night. Well, after giving them to that guy, I didn't have another pair to, to throw on. Um, but I, I let him run with them for the rest of the night. But when he got done, he was just like, dude, he was like, I, I can't believe like, we don't get issued these. These were, this, this was, this was what, uh, this was years ago when, um, when these were still, uh, in the early years and, and not a lot of units were running them at the time and we were still testing them and other things like that. So, but it was, de it was definitely really cool to see. Um, I'd buy them if they were half off. Well, I, Hey, you know, uh, sometimes we run deals. Sometimes, uh, you can find them. Um, you could definitely buy, uh, or do, do it yourself. Um, you know, one of the things, uh, so I, I'll, I'll answer this. Why are these so expensive? Right. Well, there's a few things. They're not made in China. Uh, everything we use and source, nothing we use or source is sourced from China. That's part one. Uh, they're handmade. That's part two. Um, you're buying quality at the end of the day. We stand by our quality. Uh, you know, if, if, if something happens to them um, and, and they break, uh, they don't operate that well, we stand by our craftsmanship. We stand by our quality. We stand by our brand and uh, we'll, we'll take care of the customers. Um, another part is, is um, you're putting it on a product that minimum you've spent seven thousand dollars if you're buying you know duels if you're buying singles maybe four thousand three thousand you know you've just spent thousands of dollars on this you've got another eight hundred thousand dollars on a helmet who knows how much money you also have in guns and other stuff like that too right this is just like one of those products right like you know at the end of the day when you want something that is of quality you're going to pay for it and so that's what this is it's a, it's a quality product it's a premium product uh, we know that um, if we could make this for $20, I would totally make it for $20 and I would sell it for 50. There's no way I can make this for $20 and sell it for 50 though. Um, I I'd love to be able to sell them for 50 bucks. Um, but there's just no way we can do it and, 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 and be able to make them here in America. That that's just what it is. Uh, the other part that I'd like to, uh, mention on terms of, you know, when you look at our product and um, either a scope cap design, some of the other DIY designs, um, and 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 even the uh, um, you know other other like there's there's aluminum ones that I'm starting to see now uh, that that come out of China. Uh, you're putting this again on something that if you drop it and it falls and hits the ground. You could potentially damage your your um, your tubes, right? So this is a rubber because if if it does fall and drop, there's rubber is there to design to take some of that uh, shock and absorption. So think of think of your old like otter boxes or or things like that, right? That's why they put those they make them out of rubber or they have that rubber corners on on your on your iPhone or your Android or something like that. So if you do drop your product, um, you know, it's going to take that shock absorption. Our, our, uh, this right here, this, uh, sacrificial lens is made out of corning glass. We made it out of, that's my dog. Uh, we made it out of corning glass because it's, it's high strength. It's not going to, uh, scratch very easy. It's going to resist, um, um, you know, any, abrasion dust debris um everything you need to do with this product you can disassemble 100 percent with your hands there's no special tools that you need you don't need some proprietary screwdriver or something to open this up and get into this product if you need to right 
it's all right there. I can peel all this back. I can do whatever I need to do. Uh, so that that's just some on the on the price. Uh, and again, like I said, there are options out there that are cheaper. Go grab one of those. And if you really like it, and then you want to eventually upgrade and and run a pretty good product, we've got it here. Hey, come here. Stop. Um. <clears throat> All right, so, um, so another thing we get are a question or, or email, hey, my Tarsier showed up and it was stiff. Um, and so I will admittedly say, uh, you know, about two years ago, um, we started getting some, some questions of, hey, oh, more, we got more and more complaints really of, hey, this is turning my optic of my MVG. So it was causing it to, to turn your MVG. So one, in terms of the operation, why we leave this little nipple, 99% of our, of our customers are wearing gloves. They're operating with gloves, right? So we kept this there so they knew that they could just grab this. The other thing is, is if you grab here and you Gorilla Grip this, I'm going to also turn my MVG thing, uh, 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 MVG focus, uh, MVG thing. You know, I know what I mean. Um, you can do it if you gently touch it, but if you're rushing real quick to do something, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to gorilla grip it. You're going to cause too much friction in between the rubber and the iris to now also turn your optic on your MVG, your optic lens or your MVG. So that's why this little nipple stays there. Uh, uh, so you can adjust it from that. You can do your fine adjustment by grabbing up there, adjust it, grab this one, adjust it. Again, the point of these is to not sit there all night long and sit there and keep adjusting your MVG. That, that's counter uh, why you purchase these. Um, so are there, uh, so, oh, so going back into why it's stiff. So um, again, you know, I guess I say uh, um, a few years ago, we were getting complaints about the irises, uh, the Tarsiers uh, arriving and they were too stiff. So our first thing was, is, hey, check your operation, make sure you're doing this, this, and this. And they came back and said, hey, we're doing that. And they're still messing up. Um so the uh, after enough people kind of kept complaining about it, uh, we went back and looked. We went back and looked at our QC process, and so what we found was our QC process just became too subjective to the to the uh, production lines. So depending on who was at the end of that line and was testing it they didn't have really a standard. And so that was, that was definitely a lesson learned on our part, um, you know, as we went through and um, we needed to have a true standard that our guys were building these two. And so one of our guys on our team, Mike, um, he developed, uh, it built this little, uh, it's a simple pull test, um, built this little device. And now in our QC process, they will, test these to make sure that they're within our standards. And it, as long as it is, then it passes and it moves on. Now, they are hand-built. We are human. We don't get it 100% right. So if your Tarsier arrives and it feels too stiff or it's moving your adjustment, reach out to sales at and uh, or hit us up on Instagram or Facebook or one of the, the messaging services and, and, and we'll, we'll talk you through some of the things. We have a cleaning kit. We have some of this. Um, the other thing you can do, which is uh, pretty easy, I'll try to I'll try to do it while I'm talking too. So I'm going to need to kind of pull it off camera for a second, but I'll show you what I did. Um, all right. So I took the other side of the nipple and I just peel this top or, or I peel this uh, um, part off. So I I peel this outer ring off. And you can see there it is, and there's the iris and everything. If you take this and you pull it apart a little bit, and kind of work it around uh, a couple times. Uh, you can also, depending on how long you've had it or whatever, you might need to take a quick little like brush and brush in there. 
Um, we also do have a cleaning kit. Again, if it arrives in the wrong, we will we will ship you a free cleaning kit with it. They come uh, they come with the uh, if you buy an actual kit, it comes with the Tarziers in that kit uh, with an extra um, uh, sacrificial lens. But you can put a couple things of dry uh, dry lube in there. And then that will just help it glide easier on uh, this outer body or this inner body here. Uh, the only th points to performance when you're putting it back together, you just need to make sure that the Tarzier uh, is all the way open here. And uh, it's against that wall before you slide it back into uh, the, the outer housing here. Um, so again, I'm going to try to do this while I talk. Um, hopefully I can and not screwed up too much but um let's see uh so that's kind of the the you know dust debris if 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 you have obviously you can reach out to us uh we can we can help you um all righty there we go now back to back to good all right all right last page of questions um, kind of already addressed this one. Uh, how, how often do I need to adjust the Tarzier? Again, I, I think we've beat that one to death. I don't think we need to talk about that anymore. Um, again, it's, it, it's not designed to sit here all night long and keep adjusting the, the Tarzier clips. Um, it's designed to set it and forget it. So, um, and so the last question I have here is, uh, does the Tarzier work with um, some kind of clip-on thermal, or some kind of Kodi or e -Kodi device? And unfortunately, they do not uh, work with any thermal imagers um, at the same time you're running one of these. Um, what we have found, uh, some guys, if they're running binos, um, what some guys will do is they will run the Tarzier on one and then they'll run their, their thermal on the other, uh, typically on their non-dominant eye. They'll, they'll put the Cody or e -Cody on their non-dominant eye. Um, guys that run quads, uh, they'll typically run these on the center two tubes, and then they'll leave their uh, peripheral tubes um, open and they won't put any Tarziers on them. So um, if you guys don't have any questions, uh, I'll, I'll jump off, but it, you know I did want to um, you know, I know it's Friday afternoon, it's five o'clock. Um, so if you don't have any questions, I'll jump off, but I'll, I'll stay on for a little bit. Either answer your questions about the Tarzier clips, uh, Matbox, uh, any of our gear, anything like that. Uh, happy to answer any questions. If you guys got any right now, I've been talking a lot and haven't, uh, haven't answered any questions. So, uh, if anyone's got anything, let me know. Oh, sweet man. Yeah, we'll see you out there. Uh, uh, I don't know who all is going down to Soma. I, I will not be at Soma, but um, is strict medical of the OEM for your? Uh, no, they are not. So we, uh, no, we make everything ourselves. Um, so we make our, we, we make our own products here, um, in, in 757 in Virginia beach. So, or do you have our agreements, license design? Uh, so the, so the grave robber, so the grave robber initially was a partnership we did with, um, with Crow Medical. Uh, so Crow Medical and us, we, we, we designed that whole uh, grave robber line. So uh, initially it was just the assault, so the gram, so the assault medic, the, um, the sustainment and the, uh, the, the tech ruck, the technical ruck, um, which was kind of a combination of, of or the surgical and, the, and that. So uh, those, those three were the initial that we worked with them on. And then um, from there, we added some lines. Uh, Crow also has done some of their own um, designs as well uh, off of the Grave Robber. The, the Grave Robber dive bag, though, that was, that was separate. We, we did that off of another requirement that we had uh, coming out of NSW. Um, that was, that was separate, but it fit in the line of the grave robber series for us. So we just named it a grave robber. 
<clears throat> what are what are the questions you guys got? Nothing, nothing. Bueller, what's up, Zach? All right, well, uh, let's. Uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen it, so um, yeah. I mean, there, there. I mean, there, there are other guys. I mean, we, you know, the the our 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 MR dry line. Uh, you know, we came out with that, and then other people have uh, other people are doing doing the exact same stuff. So, you know, it happens. That's the that's the tactical space. So. Unfortunately, we've still been waiting to get our patent issued on on the MR Dry uh, series. So there's nothing we can do about it until then. Is the ours 100% light proof? Um, I wouldn't say. I mean, is it 100% light proof? So, yeah, I mean, you're not going to see, you're not going to see any light coming through the iris um, outside of, um, outside of the hole. No, um, no, we never worked with the TRY tactical guys. Uh, typically, uh, typically, we don't work with other guys in the industry. Um, uh, we have. <clears throat> we have uh we we talk to a lot of the guys i mean we're, we're 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 friends with a lot of the guys obviously in the industry um um you know but we don't necessarily like collaborate and build products with them we've done some stuff with mr ranch because they they uh do packs uh um uh they, they've got a really good frame system so we've built some bags off of their frame system there's no no sense in reinventing a, a frame if they've really they've got a good frame um you know that that works and uh <clears throat> uh so um but yeah i mean at the end of the day i mean we we um uh, we try to we try to stick to innovation uh keep coming up with new stuff um we really push in our materials uh so a lot of hey what's up Richmond. Uh, so we really invest in our materials and coming up with and developing new materials and, um, and rely more on that than, than just doing what everyone else is doing in terms of well, it's a plate carrier. Well, yeah, our plate carrier, you know, looks like a plate carrier. Um, but there's so much technology in, in the fabric uh, that we use our ghost material that uh and and part part of part of why it's so expensive um the material so like you know this is completely outside of the tarzir eclipse uh obviously but like um you know our cost of goods for our fabric on a per yard basis is is 10 to 15 times more expensive than um what someone's paying for um than so, what someone's paying for a, a regular, you know, kind of material that you see on the market. What's up, Zach? Hey, man, let me know if you want to join in on the old uh, live here. I've been talking about Tarzirs, but now we're in fabrics. So, <laughs> um, but, you know, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, that's really where we continue to focus. We continue to focus on, on innovating, um, pushing the ball forward and, and really not worried, of, not really worried about what, you know, people are knocking off and doing uh, to some degree and just keep pushing forward and, 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 uh, developing something new because at the end of the day, you know, we're already on to, you know, step five and six and they're still back at step two. So you should do the Sean Ryan podcast. Yeah. I mean, I'm down. I do, I do podcasts from time to time. So, uh, do you know, Chris Vincent? I, I don't, um, I might know him if I saw him somewhere, but the name doesn't sound familiar right now. So, anything else on the Tarzir? 
Nope, nope. Going once, going twice. Zach, you want to join in? Come on, raise your hand. I know you do. I know you're chomping at the bit to come on and say, hey, everybody, everybody, no, everyone doesn't know who you are. <laughs> but everybody does know who you are. At, at, it's, it's funny. It's like social media, everyone knows who I am. And then at shows and everybody, everyone knows Zach. So cool. Well, hey, appreciate the time, guys. Uh, Tarzir Clips, uh, go check them out. What's up, Randy? Or the rest of the crew at TAC 11. I don't know which one it is. But, uh, um, you know, go check out the Tarzir Clips. We got a bunch of videos on our YouTube channel, obviously here on Instagram, Facebook. Um, they're there. Um, if you got any other questions that we didn't answer uh, or something else, you could sh- shoot us in the DMs or, you know, like I said, reach out to sales at madbox.com and uh, they'll be able to answer you. All right, man. Appreciate ya. See ya. Bye.